Hello again, ladies. It's hard to people in this area. There's not a lot of affordable housing, so I have to turn around to doing something else just to pay for my bills and my rent. <laughs> I'm just caged up in this building of support and accommodation. Have you been sleeping around here anywhere? Yeah, that, that one over there. Sometimes get underneath wheels and that. So what, sort of... right under there? Yeah. I don't think for one second that when someone thinks of North Devon that youth homelessness is even on their list. But we've got the highest rate of youth homelessness in the whole country. Good morning, North Devon. Loving North Devon. This is The Voice with Hobson Chapel. We are just loving the sunshine at the moment, streaming through the window. So it's 7.45. Just had a phone call from the council about a young woman who's apparently rough sleeping in a cemetery. She's a lady with massive complex needs, mental health, alcohol. The council have just called me to keep an eye on her. At the minute, I just don't want another dead homeless person. I've been doing this job here for seven years now and I've lost 14 people that I've worked with. The youngest one was 23. It's times like this when I would really like to live stream direct to the House of Bloody Commons. Oh, she's still there, thank God. Hello. Is it right to come over and have a chat? Did you stay here last night? Yeah. Yeah. If we can't find you anything, where will you be staying tonight? Would it be here? Yeah. Yeah. How much have you drunk today? Um. A little bit of this. I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm just, I'm really, really worried about your health. Oh, it's horrible. It's really horrible to see someone like that. And I've seen it so many times, but she's so young. Around here, the things that we need for these clients don't exist. Like some rooms where there is staff on site to keep an eye on her, feed her, close her, and then get all the services in. But I haven't got any vacancies at the minute. How does it make me feel? Yeah. Shit. Because, like, look over there. Look at that beautiful view of the ocean. It's a beautiful day, and there's nothing I can do right now. It's just heartbreaking. There's a homelessness problem specifically to here because a lot of the work is seasonal. We have got a big tourist industry. We've got a massive proportion of properties that are holiday lets. Out of season, they'll rent these holiday lets out on six months' tenancies, but you only get to live in the property for six months. And then you become homeless. How many sugars do you have, Harry? Oh, just one piece. Just one. Yeah. This is like a big spoon, so I'll do like one small one. So this is where eight of us live in separate individual rooms. Uh, first step when you walk into the property is the kitchen. I wouldn't say there's actually any rules apart from you use it, you wash it, you put it back. That. Oh, fucking hell, look at this, you see that? They can't be asked even to script that in the bin. Anyone hungry? When I was a teenager, I was diagnosed with borderline OCD. It's just dirty. It does kind of drive me a little bit insane with the cleansiness. How old is it? I think I might have to get a master's degree in that, a PhD in something. People just don't, can't be fucked to put food in the bin. It's just disgusting. I ain't touching it because it's not mine. When I was about two years old, my mum became a single parent. I wanted both parents to be involved in my life, but that was never going to happen. I just never received the love that a normal child would. Social services got involved and they taken me away. I was in foster care. Bounce around from Swansea, um, Wiltshire, Essex, Cornwall, Devon, Somerset. They put me in B&Bs until they found me supported housing, and here I am today in Joy Street. But yeah, we shall uh, move on to my room.
It's nothing fancy. I mean, there's no point in me putting pictures up or anything like that because it'll only come down again in a week or a month or a couple of months. I've never been settled where I can actually unpack and relax. It feels like I'm always tense. I'm, my, my, my shoulders are always up high, my guard's always up. And I don't wear fancy clothing because if I was to be homeless, then I'm prepared to go in the woods and make camp there, tarpaulin and whatever the weather, whatever the season, I, I'm, I'm ready for it type of thing. I, I would love to be able to like own a place, maybe, and paint it, make it more personal. But I've lived my life with the, where the walls always stay white. All of the people that I come into contact with that are homeless, housing is not just the only issue. When I get someone into supported accommodation, that's one issue covered. You've then got to tackle all the other issues around it. The biggest thing, I think, for someone like Harry is confidence. And that's because he's not had the experience. He's not been shown very much. Now, to most of us, the skill of making cheese scones is incredibly basic. But for someone like Harry and the other guys here, they've never had that input. Do you want to make him a night watch? No! I want to see how much you've remembered from last time. Did you do cooking lessons at school? Me go to school. <laughs> <laughs> when you did, when you did go to school, did you do anything? I was only at school to flirt with girls and get into trouble. Oh, when my days. Together. Be more gentle with oh, it. Oh, so I'm putting it together? You're pulling it oh, together. OK, sorry, yes, I, thought, I thought together. I was still doing the crumbs thing. I get so much satisfaction from helping change people's circumstances with housing. <laughs> you did that. Damn. But we have strong guidelines about who we can work with. Some people choose to do things that are illegal and we just can't support this. Hello again, ladies. Uh, looking lovely as ever. Nice to see you again. I've got eight plants in there. Here we go, time to cut. Another twig down. I moved into the house about six months ago. I moved in here without the landlord knowing about the cannabis plants coming in with me upstairs. The time has come. <laughs> It's been a pleasure. <laughs> if you're uh, growing in a small rural community, you need to blend in with society and don't make it look like you're doing anything that perhaps you shouldn't be doing. I won't go into detail. I'm an upstanding citizen, a member of the community. But my nine to five job doesn't earn me enough money to make a decent living. What can I do for you? You have to get that little blimp, won't you? This please, 25 bucks. All right, nice one, mate. All right. In the West Country, loads of houses being bought up by city folk, whilst people have born and bred in the area, you know, families have been here for generations, struggle to get housing, and people have to turn their hands to doing something else, like perhaps growing a little bit of weeds to boost their income. Right, there's someone at the door, sit, hold so long. There you go, that's your paranoia when you're doing that. Twitchy, twitchy. <laughs> So I'm going to go to the estate agents today and see what is available, see if I can afford a few things and move on. I don't want to live here forever. I'd like to move out of here. I want to live independently. Being in a supported house like this on Universal Credit, I'm not able to work and therefore I'm not doing anything with my life, but it's just a holding place. We're waiting for something to happen. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Harry. Right, I understand you're after a one-bed flat, yeah, in and around Biddyford? Yes. That sort of thing? North Devon. North Devon, generally. This is a studio apartment. That then is 375 uh, a month. You won't get much cheaper than that. You would then pay your water, yep. electric, council tax, gas, on top. No so you're al always then paying your rent in advance. Much appreciated. I'll leave Thank it you. with you. All right. And I hope I'll see you again soon. Will do. I've just got to go back now and uh, do some calculations out so I can afford it. I just want to be the normal, average person in life. Working full-time, paying your bills, uh, keeping yourself afloat type of thing. I'm 24, so national minimum wage, £7.70. But if I was 25, which I am in October and over, I'll be on £8.21. But because I'm 24, I'm on £7.70, which I just think is absolute crap. So that's £1,000. And £78. So, yeah, move out of here, move into a property. I have £1,100. 
is going to cost me 375 for the first month's rent, 375 again for the deposit. Then I pay the first month of gas, electric and water, that's £90. Call it £100. Plus the first month of council tax, which is estimated at £100, I'll be left with £138 for shopping to survive till the second month. What about things like furnishing the flat? Oh, yeah, good luck with that. The universal credit, the money I'm on is so shockingly shit, it's going to be a few years to get up to £1,000. Once young people get into that cycle of supported accommodation, it can be really hard for them to break free from that, no matter how hard they want to. It's almost like the system traps them. It's becoming more and more difficult to get people that are homeless into even temporary accommodation, let alone anything more permanent. Morning. You are right. we're rough sleeper outreach workers. I just wondered if you'd seen anyone that appears to be sleeping rough. No, I haven't. You no, haven't? All no, right, no, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Who are you looking for? A uh, guy called David. Hello, Noel. Okay. You are right. We're just on the Tarka Trail, at least the water. He, he was wondering whether he might be able to find somewhere to stay, and he hasn't got a phone. Hello? Are you rough sleeping? Yeah. David, it's Kay. Hey, you're right. So, have you been sleeping around here anywhere? Yeah. That, that one over there, I tend to right. sit in. Sometimes they get underneath wheels and that. So what, right of... under there? Yeah. So we've just found someone that's that's been basically walking the streets all night. He's 29 years old. He's not had settled accommodation for quite a while now. And he probably hasn't slept properly for weeks. I need to get him in a and b It's not ideal. But it's better than this. Oh, hi there. Could you tell me if you've got a single room available? My guess is that because we're literally three, four days away from the school holidays, that they're all booked up. You haven't got anything OK, as predicted. Thank you anyway. They're full. Tourists. You've got nothing. Oh, OK, think, think, think. OK, thank you. No, that's fine. Oh, this is so stressful. <laughs> OK, I'll try them. No availability. School holidays. Because there's that many people in need of private rented accommodation, landlords have got the pick of the crop. Please leave your name after the beep. Hello. I'm just ringing to book my house inspection. The easiest days for me would be Thursday or Friday. Not too early in the morning, you know, about half past ten onwards. Thank you. Bye. It's a ball ache for anyone in rental or property. Whether they're growing weed or not, the house inspection is always going to be a little bit inconvenient. Today the lights come down, take the tent down, get everything packed up, clean that box up. I'll have to write some random thing on the box perhaps to misguide them. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, the system no longer works. In this area, there's no real job security. Loads of temporary work for the summer, tourist work, it's all minimum wage. Well, some fat cat that has bought up all these properties is living up on all, you know, they're not very hard earned income. For the local people in the area, it's a struggle to find affordable housing. All across Britain, in coastal areas, Young people are struggling because there's no affordable accommodation for them and there isn't a decent job market. So they're becoming totally stuck. And then you look around you, you've got all these empty buildings just standing there with no one living in them. I'm in this old abandoned property on my doorstep in Devon. It's literally preserved. It's still got paint, it's still got curtains left over. It just needs renovating. Just needs a bit of TLC and off it goes. And it's the same with me. I just need a bit of help and support and then I can take it from there. For people like me to improve our lives, 
we have to take little steps. To live independently is probably the most crucial and important of those little steps. And without housing, you can't do nothing. But I can't see a way out. It's pretty hard with this job. You can't feel like crap and show it. Gulliver's come to say hello! I deliver a leaflet, I get 5p. People think Devon saw beaches and farms, but most people have two or three jobs. It's you against everyone else. Ah!